who's taking the money in the nugget. Maybe with, with blockchain, you know, somebody's taking the money. Maybe you're not running it, but at least, you know, somebody's taking the money. Maybe that's what it is. Okay. And the next question I'd like to look at is this, when you look at, say, I mean, uh, one of the key use cases that typically people talk about blockchain is that you don't need a reconciliation. So it's like a godsend for audit. I mean, you can, you can find it, do instant reconciliation, you can actually track things to go through an audit. So that's where people talk about audit, transforming the way of what it has been done for the last 18 years is that can be done, don't do double bookkeeping and things like that. One of the things that we've been learning from pilots for the last maybe two years or so is that you realize that this works well in a digital asset. When you look at pure digital forms of order, if you say digital currencies or digital assets, maybe you look at uh, maybe a MVP song and things like that, that's easy to trace. But you'd want to apply this to a physical scenario. Maybe you'd want to look at, say, maybe uh, a list of bottles that I can have. Is that something that doesn't really work? What are your, your, your views on that? Do you think blockchain would be applicable to this case? If so, what do you think would be challenges? <coughs> How do you want to say the dichotomy between the real world and the digital world? And would you think blockchain is a solution? If so, is that because that's a typical use case that you see in enterprise, right? Can I use blockchain as a nature? of transactions, but then there's a physical view and there's like a digital view that sits on the platform. The physical view is completely different. I might say there's a bottle in the room and the bottle doesn't exist. Is that, is that a solution that you see? You see process the organization. What do you think would be your thoughts on that? See, I think uh, uh, if you look at it, any asset can be digitized. So it's not that you know you really need, uh, it's very difficult. For example, if you take this bottle, you can use a variety of technologies to actually digitize it. And, uh, say, okay, this is this bottle which is actually 250 ml, etc., etc. Uh, currency also went through that uh, motion, you know, ultimately today the form of notes was looking something else in the past, it used to be grains when we started off. So it's all about, you know, how do we apply imagination <coughs> and digitize it. I was very impressed with one of the startups which has, uh, you know, created a solution outside where the land of the farmer can be digitized in small tokens. And when, let's say, he has uh, some... Uh, contingency or you know he's not able to uh, uh, get produce as he wanted he can give that token and actually once he uh, gives the money back he gets that token land back as part of that bit so uh, that part of that uh, crypto uh, token so uh, i think ideas do exist you can do the same thing with your house you know let's say you have a three bedroom house and don't use one bedroom now it's only you, you can give it on rent but i think the only logical thing you need to do is how do you create that other door so it's about you know, how do you create these possibilities that things can happen. I'm seeing a lot of things happen in the world. So for example, in trade, you know, if you look at ball bearing is a very uh, interesting example. You know, ball bearing can come for five rupees also. The most int uh, most intricate ball bearing can be you know 20 times, 100 times, 5,000 times more expensive than that. Yeah. So when it is coming in, into a bank for a uh, any trade uh, transaction, the due diligence on that is very difficult. Whether it was a 10 ruby ball bearing or it was a 1 lakh ruby ball bearing. You know? now with a variety of technologies, actually, blockchain can make that trade very easy, just like Amazon. Yeah? You can have IoT, you can have a lot of other things, you know, to actually say this is that ball bearing and this is this kind of attributes and the anti money laundering checks, etc., can be streamlined. Yeah. So it does, it, it, uh, the possibilities are endless. You know, it's just the imagination on how do we use that imagination. Take that yeah, so so the way I've been thinking about this is, so what is purely or nakedly digital is the sort, right? Uh, and what is purely physical, like this bottle is, is <coughs> But somewhere in between is, a, is something that has digital value. And what I mean by that is, like, if you think very simply a cryptocurrency, right? It has some value that somebody will ascribe to it. And if you have uh, real world entities like that, uh, which potentially in digital existence have real value, someone willing to pay money for that digital existence, that may be the easier ones to, to start off with, right? And in the beginning, uh, what we do is, there are many assets like that in the financial world. We look for things whose solutions today, as they exist, are suboptimal. So everybody talk, talks of putting the equity market on the blockchain, but believe me, the equity market has had enough investment over the last 50, 70, 80 years. It's fairly okay. Now, nobody wants you to take blockchain and try to solve that problem without any additional
traditional user benefit. But find other areas around that where today's technology does not offer a great experience and you will find the places where you can make this work. And then it's step by step to the next next uh, stage and so on. So that's the way I look at it. It's evolution.